Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. Let's talk about Saquon Barkley. Let's talk about Saquon Barkley because this man came out here, slow runs at the beginning, not much was going on, and then he has a crease, big run. And, and he had that crease because I think it was Burns or Ojolari, one of the two, completely just dove inside and didn't keep contained there. The one thing that this defense struggles with is outside runs, and they continue to allow it. They continue to allow these outside runs. You let Saquon Barkley get that daylight, and once he did that, the confidence was there, and he was running with a whole level, whole different level of confidence and assertiveness. Saquon, once he had that run off that left side, that 55-yarder, the game was over. And also, the Eagles are starting to realize we don't have to let Jalen Hurts keep dropping back and get sacked when we can just run the ball on this team. They can't stop the run. They can't stop the run off the edges. So why would we, why would we throw the ball? And I'm thinking that's a very good point. The Giants cannot stop the run off the edges. Saquon Barkley went for 17 carries, 176 yards. 17 carries, 176 yards. Uh, Kenneth Gainwell, 56 yards on 13 carries. Jalen Hurts with 22 yards, but some crucial 22 yards. And essentially, like I said, some people are saying the defense gave up, but the defense over the course of this season, when they keep at it, when they keep at it and they attack those edges, they can't stop the run. And it, it's just that simple. So hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully, you know, we can we can eventually get better in that category, but it doesn't really matter for this season because the Giants are going into uh, this next game at, what, two and five. This is the second time they had the chance to kind of turn their season around a little. If they win this game, they'll be three and three and uh, three and four. The Eagles have been three and four. They'd be, what, one or two games out of first place. It, <laughs> it, and, and as I'm talking right now, the punter just got to run into the kicker call. So it, that, that's happening too. But Saquon Barkley tore this defense apart because they just got shredded. There were gaps everywhere. There were gaps everywhere. People kept on crashing down. And then after a while, he just was bouncing off of guys. And uh, he should have had 240 yards today. But they set him down at the beginning of the fourth quarter. So that's one thing. Uh, the offensive line, let's go back to them. Andrew Thomas is out, and all of a sudden, Jermaine Illuminor can't block. He's given up three sacks today. Three sacks from Jermaine Illuminor after not giving up any sacks the first, what, six weeks? All of a sudden, Jermaine Illuminor is giving up three sacks in a game. All of a sudden, he can't block. He can't block to save his life. You got Azudu over there, and they got him at left tackle. And I promise you, every single time Josh Azudu dropped back today and had a one on one matchup, with a pass rusher, he lost it outright. He lost every single matchup today. Every single one-on-one -on -one that Azudu had today, he lost it outright. N not good at all. Evan Neal is not good either. But to watch Azudu continue to lose every single rep and not try to make a change there is malpractice. It's ridiculous. It makes no sense that you watch Azudu go out there and not block one time. It's ridiculous. And then you look at the, the, the play calling. You look at the play calling. And the fact that we decided not to run the ball until like the end of the second half, the end of the second quarter, it's crazy to me. Because again, Andrew Thomas is out. Josh Azudu was a decent run blocker. So how about you get him some confidence? Let him run the ball at the beginning. Nope, we didn't run the ball. We, we, we kind of stayed away from that. And when we went down, you know, of course, we started running the ball. So this offensive line completely let us down. Um, Van Roten was one-on-one -on -one with Jalen Carter. I have no idea why that happened. Why leave anybody one-on-one -on -one with Jalen Carter that's not a good, a good guard? He's a decent guard. He's not a good guard. We've been able to hide him, but one-on-one -on -one with Jalen Carter, that's, that's no good. That's no good. Um, Another thing that was strange, A.J. Brown scored the Eagles' first touchdown while our defense had them in a blender. A.J. Brown scored their first touchdown on fourth and three 
because Shane Bowen decided to put Nick McLeod one-on-one, mano-a-mano, man-to-man, hand-to-hand. He decided to put Nick McLeod one-on-one with no safety help against A.J. Brown. That was a good idea, sure. That made sense. It, that That's literally the dumbest thing you can do in that situation. And some people are probably thinking, he's going to throw it short. Why do you really think that Jalen Hurts, the guy that throws to two people, he throws to A.J. Brown and he throws to Devontae Smith and he throws to the running back. He throws to two people, two receivers. Do you really think that if he saw A.J. Brown one-on-one with the Giants, what, at best, third, best outside corner, with no safety help, he's not, he's not taking that shot? you really think he cares that it's fourth down? Jalen Hurts today was 10 for 14 and 114 yards, and he threw a 41-yard bomb. So you take 41 yards away. Jalen Hurts had 60-something yards today besides that pass. As the Giants get a garbage time sack by the Timon Fox, and that'll put them... They continue to lead the league in sacks. <laughs> they continue to do that. But I'll get to that in a second. Jalen Hurts had... 60 something yards besides that one play that we decided to put our third best outside corner at best on on AJ Brown with no safety help. No sense at all. Makes no sense. Um I I just don't know what to say about that. Some of those decisions, some of those personnel decisions and, and defensive decisions made no sense to me today. Uh now What I liked about the defense is they were dominant. The the defensive line got after it, as they've done pretty much all season, is they got into the backfield. They affected the quarterback. They batted passes down. They sacked the quarterback. And if this was a game that stayed competitive to where Jalen Hurts had to keep throwing it, we probably would have seven, eight sacks, just like the Eagles ended up having. Probably would have had that. But Giants offense didn't hold their end of the bargain up. And the defense put up, an amazing first quarter, amazing first quarter and a half of of play, and we weren't able to capitalize on it. Like the defense would have had to score a touchdown for us to be in this game at the beginning of it. Dexter Lawrence, shout out to you. You got nine sacks. A nose tackle, nine sacks in the first seven games. He's got nine sacks from nose tackle, and his team is two and five. Dexter Lawrence should be a defensive player of the year runaway And because this offense and the guy that I'm going to talk about pretty soon, because of this offense, Dexter Lawrence won't sniff the trophy because his offense is this bad. He should be runaway defensive player of the year. Um, Drew Phillips, a guy that stood out to me. Drew Phillips made some really great tackles today. And I'm happy to have him on my football team. He's he's made some good tackles today. And uh, I just wanted to give him a shout out because... He got hurt, came back, and he's he's back to doing what he was doing earlier. He, he tackled Saquon one on one in the open field. At for a cornerback, that's 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 a lot of props. So let's talk about the state of the Giants. Let's talk about the fact that they have not been able to make anything happen. They've not been able to make anything happen at home for the majority of the the last decade, and they continue to put up stinkers like this where they have less than 150 yards. You got less than 150 yards, and you're just going out there, just stinking a place up. It, this happens every single year against the Eagles and the Cowboys. You go out, and you can't, you can barely get past midfield. And, like, for a team to do this this many times over this, like, over this long is honestly unheard of. It's honestly unheard of. I don't think we've ever seen a team play this bad over this long. Like, how many times are the Giants going to go out there with this guy, Daniel Jones, and not get 200 yards of offense? Today we had what? Today we had how many yards of total offense? Because you, you lose yards when you get sacked. So they had 119 total yards of offense today. They had 43 passing yards because of all the sacks. And if you, you know, if you take away that part, Daniel Jones, you know, without the sacks, had 99 yards today on 21 passes. 99 yards. The longest throw that we had today was 14-yard completion 
to Malik Neighbors, who had 41 yards, which is almost half of Daniel Jones's day. And how many times are we going to continue to suit this guy, Daniel Jones, up and watch this performance? And yes, the offensive line was a disaster. But it seems like when the offensive line isn't playing like a top 10 offensive line or top five offensive line, we can't get any production. Is this the worst offensive line in NFL history? Yes or no? Is this the worst offensive line in NFL history? It's not. I don't think so. And this is, this is, we should be getting better quarterback play. I watched quarterbacks game after game against us, against this pass rush, be able to maneuver against this Giants pass rush. So why can't our team, why can't our offense do it? Why can't our offense do it? The problem at quarterback is so outstanding that we cannot operate unless we have a top five offensive line pass protection wise and something has to be done about it something's got to be done about it how many times are we going to watch this folks how many times because when daniel jones goes out there maybe next week or maybe in a couple weeks and he throws for 180 yards or 250 or whatever and two touchdowns we're going to forget about today we're going to forget about minnesota and he's going to be back here next year and we're going to see the exact same thing. When it matters, this guy is going to pull his pants down. And he's going to number two all over the stadium. He's going to number two all over the place. I'm not. He's going to mess the stadium up so bad. MetLife Stadium is just covered and just funk that smells like Daniel Jones. It's just covered in it. And they, they refuse to do anything about it. So, I mean, that, something, has to, something has to be done. Brian Dable, if he doesn't make a change, if you don't go out and get Tannehill, if you don't put DeVito in, because Locke looks like he's even worse than Daniel Jones, if you don't put DeVito in or something, you're going to lose your job, buddy. You're done. You're going to lose your job because of Daniel Jones, because you decided to continue on with this guy, you're going to lose your job. I hope you're ready for it. I hope you're ready for it. So, um, yeah, I mean, to wrap, th to wrap things up, Brian Burns is looking like he's going to miss some time because he's been struggling with that groin since the beginning of the season. And he looked like he's, he's aggravated it. Kind of had to limp off the field. So we'll see what happens with that. Andrew Thomas is done for the season. So, no hope there for the offensive line. Maybe Evan Neal, you know, saves us, but let's let's be honest. And then uh, Jalen Hyatt, not that he was a huge contributor, but Jalen Hyatt looks like he may have uh, tweaked his hamstring pretty badly, so we won't see him for a while. So get well soon on that account. Uh, Ty Summers, special teamer, got hurt early on. Hopefully he's okay. And, um, you know, it is what it is. The New York Giants continue to go out there and be so inept on offense that I start to fall asleep on stream. And we're okay with that. We're just fine with that. We know we just continue to go out there. Nothing's wrong. You know, the offensive line has to do a better job. The quarterback's no issue. So um, we got at least, what, 10 more games of this. And hopefully next year we can have a guy out there that elevates the football team and can get this train moving because this defense is outstanding as far as rushing the passer. And Malik Neighbors is a boss at receiver. So hopefully we can get things going. Uh, the Giants lose to the Philadelphia Eagles 28-3. to And it is absolutely unsettling that this keeps happening.